Okay, welcome back to part two of this Byredo inspired list of coffee fragrances from the perfume parlor. Next up is one called Purple Cloud and the perfume parlor code on this one is 0432. This is a copy of Velvet Haze, which uh, again is one that I really enjoy from the house of Byredo. It has a very clean but quite dry velvety feel about it with lots of musk and cashmere and producing a soft suede, uh, suede like texture. The most prominent note to my nose is the coconut, which is present from the first spray and stays throughout the life of the scent. Uh, but you've also got some chocolatey sweetness from the cacao pod and even more softness from the musk mallow. Uh, so it pretty much does what it, its name suggests. It's a velvety, powdery coconut uh, fragrance with a touch of indulgent sweetness. And I say this uh, would be great for the springtime or to wear in the evenings, uh, or I'd say of the summertime. It would be uh, a great one to wear on a date night because it's very charming and relaxed and again it's very unisex so if you're looking for an ultra masculine uh, smelling fragrance then this might not be for you but I really enjoy it. It's uh, a modern smelling fragrance and has uh, enough un uniqueness to intrigue the people around you and we're definitely going to be asking you what you're wearing. It's not a huge projector, uh, but it does do enough to get you noticed and I'd say you'll get about seven or eight hours uh, out of it on skin before you stop detecting it. So again, uh, one that I'd confidently recommend that you try out for yourself. Okay, so next up is one called Leaf Citrus and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1814. And this is a copy of Tobacco Mandarin, which the original Byredo version comes in a lovely deep red juice, uh, which breaks away from the minimalistic presentation that you find with most of the other Byredo fragrances with the uh, plain white label and clear juice, uh, which I find to be a little bit uninspiring if I'm honest. Whenever I'm out shopping, I always seem to gravitate towards the more quirky, colourful bottles like your Parfums de Mali, uh, Zerzhoff and your Bond Number no. 9 etc. Anyway, back to this perfume parlor version and the top notes in this are coriander, mandarin orange and cumin. Uh, in the mid there's labdanum, leather and tobacco and the base notes in this one are agar wood, sandalwood and olibanum. So this is a fragrance that should come with a little bit of a warning on the label not to expect tobacco and mandarin orange when you first spray it whatsoever uh, and then it kind of won't be disappointing for you. Uh, don't get me wrong there is a faint fruitiness in the opening which lasts about five minutes but then it's more of a, a woody smoky kind of scent uh, with maybe a, a bit of a leathery undertone also. It's the cumin that I can pick up on the most in the opening, which has a fairly pungent aroma, which some people describe as uh, coming off smelling a, a little bit sweaty sometimes. And I've got to say that for me, the opening is the most disappointing in this because if you're expecting like a sweet and juicy mandarin, you're not gonna get that. This is a dry and smoky fragrance and even the tobacco's uh, a dry leaf tobacco rather than being the sweet resinous kind. It's not in any way a bad smelling scent, it's just that it doesn't smell anything like what most people will expect it to by just going on the name alone. The original uh, of this will set you back over £200 for a 50ml bottle, which is bordering on daylight robbery in my opinion, uh, but you can try this perfume parlor extract spray out for £20 or under a tenner if you go for the standard spray, so if you're into your drier, woodier fragrances, I'm sure you'll really uh, enjoy this one because it's a decent quality fragrance on the whole. Okay, so the 11th one in this list is aptly named XI Time or 11 Time and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1973. This is a copy of 11th Hour which I think is a very unique and interesting fragrance which has a lot of stuff going on. It opens up very spicy and the pepper note is right there from the initial spray. There's also a lot of sweet fruitiness and then a boozy rum note and for the first hour or so it's like having a, a big bowl of uh, fruit punch but then pouring loads of pepper into it. It's a bit of an odd concoction uh, but it's what makes this one fairly interesting. The further you get into the dry down the fruitiness fades and then it becomes more of a, a woody fragrance whilst retaining the pepperiness and after the first hour it turns into almost a, an herbal earthy kind of aroma. It's a, a pretty easy to wear fragrance but it doesn't really have the wow factor for me and it's not something I'd reach for if I was going somewhere special. 
it's like someone has just thrown uh, kind of 10 different conf uh, conflicting fragrance notes together to see what comes out the opening is pleasant enough but the dry down left me a little bit underwhelmed and again the thought of paying £160 for a bottle of the original is enough to give me cold sweats. This extract spray is £20 and it's decent enough and the one positive is that it does smell very different and unique. The performance isn't that good in terms of its projection and it does sit fairly close to the skin however I sprayed it on a tester strip just yesterday and I could still smell it this morning when I got up so it does stick around uh, mildly for uh, a good period of time okay on to number 12 on the list and this one is called Roland and the perfume parlor code on this one is 0402 this one is a copy of Oliver Peoples Green, which is part of a small collection of fragrances created in collaboration between Byredo and Oliver Peoples, who are a famous sunglasses brand, and the various colours of the bottles represent the tints of the lenses on the sunglasses, which is quite a cool little fact, uh, but it's also a bit of a, an irrelevant, nerdy kind of fact, so hey-ho. Uh, but the top notes in this are Californian Lemon and uh, Juniper Berries. In the mid, we've got Patchouli, and Oris and the base notes in this one are Immortel, Musk and Sand. So this is a really nice opening and it introduces itself really well with juniper berries and fresh lemon and it's quite a sophisticated take on a fresh fragrance uh, because it's not sharp or piercing and it's the juniper uh, that takes over from the lemon very quickly and it's got a bit of a boozy juniper gin vibe going on uh, with some like green leaves in there and also some earthiness from the patchouli. Not surprisingly, uh, the scent becomes quite dry in the dry down with base notes of sand, immortel and musk coming through and this is where it seems to just fall apart and go a little bit flat for me because it just becomes a, a bit nondescript and frustratingly forgettable. It's a, it's, it's a real shame because the opening is actually really great and uh, fairly attention grabbing but after the first 15 minutes or so it just seems to fade into oblivion. I've had uh, this haul for a few weeks now so I don't see it being the, a maceration issue uh, because none of the others uh, have been like this but unfortunately it's just a faint earthy oily smelling mess for the most part and it's uh, a pass from me I'm afraid sorry Okay, so after the shade, there's always a little bit of light. So this next one is one of the popular Byredo fragrances. And this one goes by the name of Juice. And the perfume parlor code on this one is 1195. This is a copy of Pulp, which is classed as a fruity floral fragrance that came out in 2008. The notes in this one are blackcurrant, bergamot, cardamom, apple, fig, peach blossom, tiare flower, I don't know if that's spelt right, uh, praline and cedar. Okay, so I'll start by saying that this is uh, possibly the most polarising one of this whole line and if you just casually give this a few sprays without realising what you're going to get from it, um, it'll be like being blindsided and hit by a baseball bat. After reading the note breakdown, I thought maybe it'd be uh, a bit of a sweet fig aroma with uh, some velvety chocolate goodness in there, um, like from the, pr uh, the praline, and generally a pleasant gourmand scent. But boy, how, how I was wrong. Um, this is the most uh, sour and quite frankly the weirdest opening to any fragrance that I think I've ever smelled. The sourness is off the chart and it's like a huge tub of decaying fruit and honestly uh, there isn't a better name for it than pulp because that's exactly what you get with this one. A huge overripe sour fruit pulp uh, but here's the weird thing when you get over the initial shock it's actually really addictive and out of all of these that I've talked about today it's probably one that makes me uh, want to go back in more for, um, to smell it time and time again. As it dries down you get kind of a passion fruit kind of fruitiness which is really nice but the sourness sticks around in the background and kind of just dares you not to like it. The performance is really heavy on this one with huge projection for two to three hours and it'll stick around all day as it slowly settles down uh, to become more of a skin scent. Um, you definitely don't need to go heavy on the spray with this one, uh, just one or two sprays is more than enough. 
I actually think this is a really interesting and creative piece of perfumery and definitely one of the standout ones for me in this haul. However, it would also be one of the last ones that I'd recommend uh, to anyone as a blind buy. So I'd say you kind of just need to approach this one with a bit of caution. Uh, but if you if you you're definitely missing out if you haven't already experienced it. So I'd say definitely give it a go because it's uh, certainly something you uh, you won't have smelt before. Okay, so just three more to talk about. And this next one is called Wood Undying. And the perfume parlor code on this one is 1888. This is inspired by Oud Immortel, which uh, as the name suggests, uh, centers around the note of Oud. So there is a, a strong woodiness throughout in this one, but there's also other stuff going on. And you get a really nice little ray of sunshine from the lemon cello in the opening, which brings a, a fleeting bit of freshness, as well as the green cardamom, which adds a touch of bitter green nuttiness. But as you'd expect, as it dries down, it turns into more of a darker, rich smelling fragrance. The woodiness is sweetened up by the tobacco, and it actually reminds me a little bit of uh, some of the woody Penhaligon's fragrances, uh, like Cairo uh, or the Blazing Mr. Sam, with uh, a bit of a Middle Eastern luxurious quality going on, and it smells very expensive. The downside is that the performance isn't the best and after a couple of hours it's, it's kind of gone. So in terms of oud fragrances there's much better ones uh, than this to be had from the perfume parlour. Like their copies of Oud for Greatness by Initio Parfums or Oud Satin Mood by Maison Ma uh, Francis Kirkjan among others. Okay so the penultimate one in this list is called Unknown Territory and the perfume parlor code on this one is 0311. This is a copy of Rose of No Man's Land so there's no prizes for guessing what the main note in this one is. This is dominated by the Turkish rose but there's also pink pepper, raspberry bloom, papyrus and amber in the uh, in the base uh, so there's kind of a bit of everything going on with some tart fruitiness, a green herbal quality and also a sprinkling of pink pepper. The amber adds a, a very small amount of sweetness but this is all about the rose and it's a, a bright realistic floral rose rather than being a chocolate Turkish delight type gourmand aroma like you find in Montal's Intense Cafe. It's more along the lines of Toy Boy from Moschino and it's a, a really elegant and enjoyable take on a rose fragrance. If you're a regular to, uh, regular to the channel, you'll already know that I'm not the biggest fan of rose heavy fragrances, but this is not a bad one. Uh, and it's probably one that I might consider uh, wearing on a nice spring day. Actually, oh my trying to fool, I never reach for rose, uh, rose scented fragrances. Uh, but if you do enjoy them, uh, this, is, uh, this one is not too bad at all. And finally, we've arrived at the final one in today's haul. And this one is called Great Timber and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1570. This is a copy of Super Cedar and I wish they'd stop giving the, the name away with the names before I have a chance to talk about them. This is a woody aromatic fragrance with notes of uh, rose, Virginia cedar, Asian vetiver and musk. This is a really soft projecting woody scent with a pencil shavings type aroma and some dry dusty vetiver in the base. I don't get any rose in the opening and in fact I don't get uh, really that much of anything from this one uh, that I can kind of talk about other than that mild woodiness which lasts I'd say for about half an hour and then I, I just struggle to detect anything. It's unfortunately the most underwhelming one on, uh, on this list for me, even more so than the Oliver Peoples one because at least that had a, a really nice uh, opening. In fact I'd probably go as far as to say that this one is probably my least favourite fragrance that I've ever picked up from the perfume parlour. It's straight up boring and not one that I'd uh, ever recommend to anybody unfortunately. Okay, so in summary, uh, there's been some hits and some misses in this haul and if I was uh, to keep five of these and bin the rest, I'd keep the African Art, uh, which is the Baldar Freak copy, the Bookcase, which is a copy of Bibliotech, uh, the Purple Cloud, which is inspired by Velvet Haze, uh, the Juice, which is a copy of Pulp, and the Special Aqua, which is a copy of Gypsy Water.
There's actually none of them in this list uh, that have wowed me enough to make me want to go out and spend uh, upwards of 150 quid on a, a full bottle of the original. Uh, but the five that I've just mentioned are definitely well worth picking up from the perfume parlour and just trying out for yourself. Uh, but if you've uh, managed to get your nose on any of these in the past uh, and have uh, liked or hated them, let me know uh, down in the comments uh, your own thoughts and your experiences with them. I think all of these uh, are, are, are quite complex and have a, a bit of creativity about them uh, that are going to challenge you in some way and they won't be for everybody. A few years ago when I was only wearing designer fragrances I would have hated all of these uh, but it's strange how your, your sense of smell uh, does develop and adapt over time and some of the fragrances uh, that once disgusted me are now actually my favourites so you've got to uh, be patient with them sometimes and uh, go back to them if you don't like them uh, maybe go back to them six months uh, later on Okay, so that's about it for this mammoth rundown. Uh, but coming up in the next few days, I've got another same house review, and this time it'll be seven extract sprays inspired by NASA Marto fragrances. Then all next week, I'm going to be going all Middle Eastern and bringing you a different Afnan fragrance every day for the whole week. So some really good, uh, some really good stuff to come over the next few days. And as always, if you found this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to hit the bell icon so you can be notified whenever I upload any new content. I've now got a, a full box of these perfume parlour samples to give away uh, to people who are the first to view certain videos, so keep your eyes peeled for new uploads and some of these uh, could be making their way to you very soon. So once again, thank you very much for tuning in to this latest episode. Stay safe, keep smelling fresh and I'll see you very soon for another one. Bye bye for now.